Welcome back to the 30 days challenge. This is our day one. Now, I am really excited to talk about today's video and I hope you have the same excitement to follow this journey of 30 days. In today's video, we're going to talk about a very specific problem and a lot of our students have come up with it. Ash, I'm able to understand English, but I'm not able to speak in English. So I'm going to repeat the problem one more time. I'm able to understand English, but I'm not able to speak in English. Believe it or not, this is a problem which is faced by any such person who is trying to learn a new language. For example, if I try to learn Spanish today, I can say that I am able to understand Spanish, but I'm not able to speak Spanish fluently. And the same logic has to be applied for English. You are not able to speak fluent English and you're not able to write effortlessly. Now, before we dive into the video, I want to talk about why this problem happens in the first place. And towards the end of the video, you will find a solution to solve this problem. Okay, so come back to the blackboard here. Now, when we talk about learning a language, we have to solve the issues with reading, listening, writing and speaking. And the funny part is that reading and listening are your passive skills. They require passive skills to understand or comprehend the message. But writing and uh, speaking requires active skills. I'm going to talk about what is passive skills and active skills just now. So when I'm saying that writing and speaking requires active skills, that means something which requires instant focus. You have to be concentrated on what you are speaking. You have to concentrate on grammar range. You have to concentrate on your lexical resources or your vocabulary. You have to concentrate on your fluency. You have to concentrate on your intonation. You have to concentrate on the last and the most important thing and that is called as pronunciation. You have to concentrate on the pronunciation as well. All right. Now, the same is for writing and speaking. Both of these skills require active skills. And that's why when you're trying to speak in this language, you become a little bit slow since you require to focus on so many skills at the same time. Okay, now let's take another moment here. Writing still is comparatively easy than speaking because in writing you get time to process your thoughts. But in speaking, you don't get that time to process your information and you have to be really quick and fast to convey your idea. You have to be faster to convey your idea. Okay, now this is something which we cannot ignore. You cannot ignore the fact that my, uh, you know, my speaking is a bit slow. I'm not able to speak fluently. My writing is not that good because I'm not able to think about right ideas. But I'm able to read, I'm able to listen and understand people. You cannot ignore this fact that two of such things require passive skills. You don't have to focus much, but two of them requires active skills. You have to be attentive. Okay. Now, the second reason why this problem happens that when we try to learn a language from the age of 2 to 22, let's say you are of 22 right now. If I'm talking about your native language Hindi, you have invested almost 80% of the time in terms of speaking in that native language and 20% of the time in reading and understanding that language, especially reading. Because we don't read much in our native language, but we speak a lot in our native language. So from the age of 2 to 22, you have invested 20 years in speaking in this language. And that's why next time if you have to speak in English, or you have to speak in your native language, you're fast, you're quicker. Because now your mind and your vocal cords are in sync with each other. This is another logic which we have to pay attention. Our brain and our vocal codes, vocal codes are something with which you are able to speak, your brain which helps you to process information and your vocal codes has to be in sync with each other. The more you speak in a language, the better your brain and vocal codes will be in sync and the more fluent speaker you can call yourself. But in your native, uh, in your native language, the brain and the vocal codes are in sync most of the time. It's just a couple of times you're not able to find the right sentence or the right phrase. But when we talk about English, on the other hand, we face a real challenge 
because from the age of 2 to 22 you have not invested that much amount of time in speaking you might have invested maybe 10 percent of your energy in speaking and 90 percent of your energy in listening english and reading english you open your phone you read something you pick your phone you listen to people but how many of the times are you actually speaking so the problem lies in the process or the journey that you have followed now we are trying to talk about the learning curve. We are starting from the middle age and then we are going up till the time we feed, see the final results. So from day one, day two, or you can say from your childhood days till here, from till day 15, you will actually feel yourself failing at multiple points till the time you actually find that level of fluency, which you have been searching for. Okay, but this journey is a very slow process and in this journey, the major challenge is taking place in the field of speaking in English language and we are very comfortable in listening, reading and little bit comfortable in the writing skills as well. That's majorly about the problem. Why is it so hard for me to speak in English rather than understanding English? You know the problem now and in order to talk about the solution, it has to be opposite. What you were not doing to speak fluent English, you have to start doing it right now. So I'm going to give you two possible solutions. The first solution is think in English 24-7. What I mean by that is if you see something, you give that object a name. If you feel something, you give that feeling a name. If you see somebody doing certain activity, you narrate that particular thing in a single sentence. In our day two, we have talked about thinking in English in a very elaborated manner and hence you can check that video right in the description box. We have talked about thinking in English in a very extensive manner. Okay, that brings me to the second solution and that is practice, practice, practice. Any book you pick, any lecture you take online, everybody tells you the same thing. Practice in English language. What I'm trying to tell you today is that practice in the right direction. If you already visited our uh, uh, second video, you will understand that there are certain methods which will help you to think in English and practice will actually solve our problem of brain and vocal cord synchronization. If you speak more in this language, you will be able to be more spontaneous in your uh, thought process. And second important thing that you have to take into consideration is stop translating from your native language because when you translate, your process is very slow and you take time to grab the information, translate it from native to English and then you create sentences in English and then you speak. So the process of gaining the information and taking it out is a bit lengthy. So you, you have to completely stop translating from your native language, but you have to start practicing speech in English, even if you are at basic level or intermediate level or advanced level. You see something, give it a word, create sentences, create conversations. Okay, don't worry. These discussions has been solved in a very elaborated manner in the future. In the future videos, I want to give another example here. Imagine you want to do swimming and in your head, you're picturizing yourself swimming in big swimming pools. You are able to do that marathon in swimming, but in your head. But when it comes to reality, you are not taking any actions to solve that problem. If you go to a, an actual swimming pool and if you have not practiced enough, you jump, you will be in the water. You will not be swimming. Same logic is applied for English. Until unless you get yourself dirty in the process of learning, you will not find that comfort level in speaking in English. It's a slow process. You're going to fail multiple times. But when you come out of this 30 days challenge and when you come out of this process, you will actually be more confident and not being scared of making mistakes in English. I want to give a final message here that the process of learning something requires you to make a lot of mistakes. If you are making a mistake, you are in the right direction. You will know that I am in the process of learning something and this is my learning curve. It's going to be bumpy. I'm going to make mistakes and that's the part of the process. Believe it or not, after this video, you will be learning something really interesting. And after these 30 days challenge, you will be somebody who will not be scared 
to go in front of a crowd and give a speech in English. You will not be scared to raise your hand and ask a question in a presentation or a classroom. You will not be scared of talking to the crush of your life and you can actually express your feelings with the right amount of happiness and excitement that you have for that particular person. Okay, so this is a process. There are problems, but there are possible solutions to it. Give yourself a window of 21 days. Give yourself a window of 21 days and do something that we tell you every single day. You will see the huge changes happening with you. All right. That's all for today's video. We're going to catch up in the next video and we're going to talk about how to think in English with proper methods. I hope you subscribe our channel and I hope you like this video and I'm going to catch up in the next video. Till then, goodbye.